Big worlds have little worlds that feed on their velocity. And little worlds have lesser wheels, and so on to viscosity. Lewis Fry Richardson. Greetings, Slay Mechanics enthusiasts. Engineer Leo here. On this video, we're gonna talk about turbulence and its relation to the famous Navier-Stokes equations. As a member from an advanced species, one may wonder, how is it possible that we manage to go to the moon when at the same time we cannot accurately predict something seemingly trivial as the weather? We can barely predict the weather conditions within seven days or so. Ever wonder why does that happen? Well, the answer to this apparent inconsistency in our technology and knowledge lies in the theory of chaos, which is closely related to the theory of turbulent flows. There is a philosophical debate about whether we live in a random or in a deterministic universe, but what does that even mean? Well, to put it simple, in a random universe, there will be no consistent laws or equations that govern what happens there only apparent laws that we, as intelligent beings, could infer to approximate and establish some sense to it. We would only be able to constantly describe it using statistics. As the opposite, a deterministic universe would have consistent laws and equations governing it. Following this, Knowing the initial state of a physical system and its governing set of equations, it would be possible to predict its future at any given time. It happens that, in a system that has many variables and is highly unstable and sensible to perturbations, even if we do know the initial state and its governing laws, we would only be able to predict the near future state of this system. Furthermore, as the system evolves from its initial state, it would appear that there are no deterministic laws whatsoever governing it, appearing to be increasingly chaotic and random. That is what chaos theory is about, and there, in the middle of a random and deterministic nature, is where we find turbulent flows, or simply turbulence. There was a recurring debate over whether turbulence was a random or deterministic phenomenon. This resulted in two different approaches to study turbulence, the statistical and deterministic description of turbulence. Even though nowadays these two different views are not systematically distinct from each other, they provided different tools to study turbulence. Let's talk about the origin of turbulence. We have discussed in previous videos the famous Navier-Stokes equations, but I will summarize again its main characteristics here. Our discussion of turbulence will be limited to Newtonian, incompressive and isothermal flows, that is, Newtonian is a fluid which has a linear relationship between velocity gradients and shear stress. An incompressive fluid is a fluid that has no variation, no considerable variation of volume due to pressure. And an isothermal flow is a flow that occurs without heat exchanges. Well, the navier Stokes equations are the equations that govern these types of fluid flow, being answers the Newton's second law, which is the conservation of momentum. And uh, here on the left hand side we have the fluid acceleration, which is two terms here. We have two types of acceleration, the convective acceleration and the temporal acceleration. And uh, on the right hand side we have the sum of the forces acting on this volume, on an infinitesimal volume of fluid, which are the pressure and the viscous force. Of course, in other types of flows, you can have other forces acting, such as gravity. But here we will simplify things and consider only the pressure and viscosity. So this form here of the Navier-Stokes equation is presented on its dimensionless form. So all the flow parameters like density, viscosity, the mean flow velocity, the mean scale of velocity, 
and the length scale like for example uh, the diameter of a pipe or the length of an obstacle all these parameters are confined in only one which is their famous Reynolds number well the Reynolds number is given by this expression here we have the a velocity scale which is given by u d which is which is a length scale and uh, this letter here this greek letter nu which is the kinematic viscosity the kinematic viscosity is the dynamic viscosity divided by the density of the fluid physically speaking the reynolds number represents the ratio between inertial and viscous forces okay on the numer numerator we have the inertial forces and on the denominator we have the viscous forces we'll talk more about that later so following our discussion on turbulence uh, the flows that occur in nature can be divided basically in three types namely laminar transitional and turbulent the laminar flows occur smoothly and without lateral mixing being the minority of flows in nature they are purely deterministic, meaning that knowing the initial and boundary conditions of our uh, for, for what we are studying, we can determine its states at any future time. In addition, the velocity and pressure of these flows are well defined at every point in space. They occur typically for low Reynolds number, meaning that the viscous forces prevail over the initial forces. So typically the Reynolds number is much less and one so this means that uh, the viscous forces are much larger than the inertial forces so the product of the velocity scale and the length scale is much smaller than the kinematic viscosity if we increase the Reynolds number that means we are increasing the inertial term the inertial forces of this flow the fluid flow becomes unstable so this means that the transversal flow starts developing forming waves which distorts the main flow. This is seen in the famous Reynolds experiment where he has this pipe and uh, he places a die in the center line of the flow and as he increases the Reynolds number of this pipe flow the this die this line of die which occurs on the center line begins to uh, develop some waves and then becomes uh, totally fully unstable and occurring strong mixing of this dye. So as the inertial forces start to prevail, these fluctuations gain more strength. The initial instabilities create secondary instabilities and the secondary create uh, tertiary instabilities and so on, resulting in a wide range of wavelengths. So this intermediate state between laminar and turbulent flow is what is called a transitional flow and it will be a subject for another series of videos. It is important to note here that the transitional flow has many stages. These stages would correspond to the development of the initial stability, secondary, tertiary stabilities and so on. So there is, in fact, a critical value of the Reynolds number for which a flow becomes turbulent. And this varies from flow to flow, from the type of flow. And it's not the same, for example, like flow around an obstacle, like a cylinder, a circular cylinder, and a flow within a pipe. And uh, for more complex flows, like involving density variations and compressed flows and heat exchanges, there are other parameters, other dimensionless numbers that governs the transition to turbulence. So the Reynolds number is not the only parameter that makes the flow unstable. So if we increase further the Reynolds number, then stabilities become fully developed and we finally reach a state which is called turbulence. In this case, the Reynolds number is much larger, much greater than 1, which means that the product of the velocity scale of the flow which is, is usually the free stream velocity and the length scale of the flow is much larger than the kinematic viscosity. So the initial forces prevail over the viscous forces. And on this flow we have velocity fluctuations in all directions of space and thus a wide range 
of wavelengths in a manner that is almost impossible to visually recognize them separately from one another, as we did in transitional flows. One can argue that a flow has become chaotic. So in order to find order within the chaos, we have to rely on sophisticated mathematical tools. We can visualize this dependence of the flow regime on the Reynolds number in one example, the flow around the circular cylinder. So for very low Reynolds numbers, the flow occurs very smoothly with no vortex formation downstream of the cylinder. If we increase the Reynolds number for Reynolds number around of order 10 to the power of 1, there occurs the formation of a pair of vortices downstream of the cylinder. Increasing the Reynolds number further, these vortices become unstable and form a vortex street downstream of the cylinder, but still laminar. If we continue to increase the Reynolds number even beyond, the transition to the turbulence occurs. So what is turbulence? Is it possible to define turbulence? So turbulent flows are the majority of flows in nature, with countless examples. We have human breath, airplane flight, river flows, oceanic currents, earth atmospheric phenomena, solar flares, and even the flow of the great red spot on Jupiter, and much more. Even galaxies look to us like gargantuan Hades, meaning that the universe itself is turbulent. Turbulent flows play a fundamental role in the nature surrounding us and on our life itself. The study of turbulence has applications to the fields of aeronautics, hydraulics, nuclear and chemical engineering, oceanography, meteorology, astrophysics and much more. But how do we define turbulence? A turbulent flow is a flow which is disordered in time and space. But that is not a precise definition. Lézier, on his book Turbulence in Fluids, says the following, quote, The flows one calls turbulent may possess fairly different dynamics, may be three-dimensional or sometimes quasi-two-dimensional, may exhibit well-organized structures or otherwise. A common property which is required of them is that they should be able to mix transported quantities much more rapidly than if only molecular diffusion processes were involved." End quote. Considering this, the same author proposed the following definition of turbulence. 1. A turbulent flow must be unpredictable, in the sense that a small uncertainty as to its knowledge at a given initial time will amplify so as to render impossible a precise deterministic prediction of its evolution. 2. It has to satisfy the increased mixing property. And 3. It must involve a wide range of spatial wavelengths. So, regarding this third characteristic of the wide range of spatial wavelengths, we can understand how turbulence generates this range by analyzing the Navier-Stokes equations themselves. So here we have again the Navier-Stokes equation and we will only look at one dimensional flow. So we just consider all the other two dimensions and we look at uh, one dimensional flow. So we will assume zero pressure gradients and consider a very large Reynolds number. So the pressure theorem and the viscous theorem vanishes and we arrive at this equation here which is known as the inviscid burgers equation. We will talk more about this equation on another video, another future video. We will consider initial condition for the flow given by this cosine function here, which is a simple wave. Here key is the wave number and capital A is the amplitude of this wave. We can expand the solution of this differential equation in a Taylor series center at T0. So here it is the Taylor series up to the first order term involving the first derivative and here are confined on this term here of order t minus t0 squared the high order terms with higher order derivatives. 
So given that the time derivative on the left hand side can be isolated in this manner and that we can obtain our derivatives from the initial condition, we obtain the following. Okay, so using the identity from the sign, the relationship between sine of 2k, which is two times the wave number, we arrive finally at this expression here. So we can see that due to the nonlinear term in the Navier-Stokes equation, uh, the perturbation will amplify the velocity field over time and generate new wavelengths. Hence, the nonlinear term of the Navier-Stokes equation is the primary source of turbulence. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe to this channel, and leave your comment, please. See you next time. And for those who do not know yet, I recently launched a Patreon page where you can contribute to this channel by as low as $1 a month. So your help would be very highly appreciated. Thank you. Bye.